I'm currently in my hometown of Tyra, New Zealand, and right on top of us is a tropical storm. So my mum's power has completely cut out at home. I made my way up to her cabin here in the woods because it actually has solar power and it's actually a little bit cold with all this wind and weather, even though it is mid February, which is summer. So I decided to start the fire. And that whole B-roll sequence that you guys just watched was shot on my favorite lens that I take with me everywhere that I travel. And that's the 24 to 70 and we're gonna talk about it. So for the longest time, I was a prime shooter. When I started photography and video work, I shot on the Sony a6600, and that being a crop sensor, I was addicted to bokeh when I first started. So everything I shot on was wide open at 1.4. And I had a range of lenses with the full frame equivalent from 24 to 35, to 50 and then an 85 millimeter. And I was also chasing to have the most sharpness in my photos and videos. And I just assumed from other people's perspectives that zoom lenses were soft, but that isn't actually 100% true. It wasn't until I started doing photography and video more professionally that I realized that I seen a lot of wedding photographers and videographers using a 24 to 70. And I really asked them, I was like, hey, like, don't you like bokeh? Or doesn't like f2.8 get too dark for you? Or aren't zoom lenses soft? And basically they said, I shoot on a 24 to 70 because I can capture everything in a day. So I decided to buy my first 24 to 70 off my friend Guillaume. And that's when my photography and videography got a whole lot better. I was able to capture way more than I was when I was shooting on two bodies with two different prime lenses. I quickly realized that zoom lenses are super sharp, especially the newer ones, they're super versatile and they're actually cheaper and smaller when you compare them to a big bunch of prime lenses. So the first point that I want to point out to on zoom lenses, especially the 24 to 70, is they are so versatile. At 24 millimeter, you can capture all of your wide shots. 24 millimeter is also a great focal length for portraits. I think it's a very creative portrait focal length, and it's not really seen as a portrait length, but in the fashion world, this is the go-to for a lot of portrait photographers. 24 millimeter is also great for landscapes. It's also great for filming. I use 24 millimeter a lot. Now moving up to 35 millimeter this is a lot of portrait photographers favorite focal length because it's not as distorted as 24 millimeter but it gives some characteristics of the 24 millimeter you get a very environmental portrait photo but you don't get all of that distortion 35 millimeter is very popular for video work you will see a lot of 35 millimeter anamorphic lenses out there and there's also a ton of different 35 millimeter options for the sony system but not for the Canon RF system, which I find a little bit strange. Then moving up to the 50 millimeter. Now this is a focal length that I personally found a little bit boring when I first started photography, but it is definitely the most versatile focal length you can ever have. Like you can literally shoot a wedding on just a nifty 50. A lot of photographers would agree with me on that statement. 50 millimeter gives you not really much compression, but it will give you a lot of bokeh even at 2.8. So I find that I use 50 millimeter a lot and I use it a lot just to get a nice separation without any distortion. And then moving right up to the last focal range on a 24 to 70 is the 70 millimeter N. Now this is entering into the telephoto. So you're gonna get quite a lot of compression when you use using this focal length so all of the background is going to come closer you're going to get a lot more bokeh because of that compression as well personally i try to avoid 70 mil just because if i'm at 70 mil just everything just looks too good so I kind of get stuck at 70 mil, so I'm trying to keep to more of the 24 to 50 range, but 70 mil is great. And also when you're shooting on the Sony a7 IV with its 33 megapixels and its excellent 4K crop, you can actually punch in right into 105. If you need that extra reach, you can go into APS-C mode for photos or for video, and you'll still get excellent quality photos and video. Now there's actually one focal length that I didn't talk about, and it's actually the one that I use the most. And that is around the 28 to 50. 30 millimeter. I have been studying my Lightroom catalogs when I've been doing portrait photography and shooting for weddings for photos. And the main focal length that I love to use is around 28 to 30 millimeter. So you actually get like a bonus focal length. You can get a 28 millimeter 
prime lens, but they're a little bit rare and a little bit hard to get hold of. Now, reason number two why you should consider a 24 to 70 in your bag is because of the size. Now, 24 to 70 f 2.8 is not regarded as a small and compact lens by any means, but when you actually compare the size and weight to two different prime lenses, say like an 85 and a 50 mil at 1.4, they actually become very similar in size and weight. And having one 24 to 70 is a lot smaller than having four prime lenses to cover that focal range. My third point for why you should have a 24 to 70 in your bag is because of the price. If you went out and bought a Sigma 24 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter, this will cost you around $3,900. If you went out and bought the Sigma 24 to 70, that's only $900 USD. So that's $3,000 less that you guys could be spending more on lighting or flashes or audio equipment. Also, I'm gonna tell you guys why you should actually own a prime lens and not just a 24 to 70. Make sure you like and subscribe if you are a coffee drinker. If you don't drink coffee, hit that dislike button twice. So there's actually two limitations to a 24 to 70, and one of them is something that I definitely did at the start, and that is just zooming too much. The way that I've learned to use a 24 to 70 is treating it as a prime lens. So if I look at a scene and I'm like, oh, I would love to shoot this at 35 millimeter, I literally just set the lens to 35 millimeter. If I thought 50 millimeter would be a great focal length, I will literally just set it to 50 millimeter stay in 50 millimeter and treat it like a prime lens. Now the second downside to a 24 millimeter f 2.8 zoom lens is the low light capabilities of only being able to go as low as f 2.8. I have been caught out so many times just thinking, okay, I'm just gonna shoot this engagement shoot on my 24 to 70 and I have desperately needed to go lower than 2.8, just because there's a massive difference between 2.8 and f 1.4. So that's the reason why you guys should always have a prime lens in your bag for that one situation that you will get caught out. Unless you're lighting things properly, either with a video light or a flash, but ideally you will run into an issue where you will need a prime lens. So that's my two cents worth of primes versus zoom lenses. I think the 2470 is a staple in every photographer's camera bag. The only major advantages and the reason why I love prime lenses is because of their low light capability. If you guys wanna see a review on this 24 to 70 from Sigma F2.8, I've made a video about it. You guys can watch that right here. If you guys are coffee lovers, make sure you like and subscribe. If you don't like coffee, maybe hit the dislike button twice and we'll see you next time.